when it comes to exhibitions, it's not always easy to go solo because that means you have to create enough works of art to satisfy the appetite of the crowd, especially a discerning Lagos audience. But for these brave hearts, it's a piece of cake, or so it seems. <music> Performances and paintings are what this creative is offering the audience. Then we move to another part of Lagos for this exhibition where the colors just seem to pop. This artist is also making his mark by going solo. Solar exhibitions on this week's edition of the program. A warm welcome. I'm Melinda Akinlami. Our wordsmith for this week is titled Save Mother Earth by Daniel Ilo Adeyemi. Like a parrot, we talk and rage all day at the never-ending trauma the earth cause. Diseases bind, death tows humans like fowl. Our lands are like a desert, drought seizes our water flow. Floods come in like thieves, carting away properties. We are too blind to see, too proud to accept our fault in these dilemmas. To see the earth bleed because of our greed, it all started in the mid-18th century, the birth of industrialization, our lives and way of life rebirth. Much easier, much happier we are. Little do we know, our happiness saddens the earth. We cherish civilization, hewing down timbers for mansion, burning fossil as fuel. How rich and mighty do we grow? Turning rugged forest into mighty fortress. Generation flies, our greed grew. We striped the earth naked of dignity. Cold and without covering, she seeks revenge, making brimstone bleed and flood like an ocean. What then shall we do to appease her rage? She asks for a thing only. Plant a tree, cover her nakedness. Only then we shall live in harmony with Mother Earth. Mother Earth is the word on most people's lips, especially coming from the climate summit in Egypt. It's a wake-up call that we need to do things differently. Now to our first feature. The Miss Predictions of Aboya is a performance and exhibition by Lakule Wesu in Lagos. A collection of paintings with poetry and drama on the sidelines gives birth to this show tagged the Miss Predilections Boya as curated by Lakule Wesu, who had to work with other creatives like contemporary artists Raji Bamidili and Chopwe Awaru to bring this vision to life. It's been a privilege working on this project with um, the curator, that's um, Kule Wisu. Because I remember as at sometime last year, he came to me with a story saying he's trying to create a show with more like art, in fusion with, um, uh, with poetry and drama. Then I was like, okay, you know what? Let me see the part you want me to work on. So he sent me the part, which is more like the act one, scene one. Having read through, I felt inspired in creating the piece. And the story behind, the story behind me is more like um, a, pre-colonial era where, whereby there was more like a birth of a new child and this child is kind of like a very, diff very different from every other every other, every other child I've been which is more like a, a kid which has no predefined genital genital organ. So now this is pretty much of uh, the expression between the midwives and the birth of the, of the, of the child. is um, one of 
one of its kind. Like simply um, uh, a display of the different artworks on a particular story called character called Aboya. And my work is basically focused on Aboya the character, trying to um, reflect on the guilt of humanity. And um, it's a whole story where she's trying to reflect and show people that they should accept tech, the fact that they are flawed as human beings and like live beyond what um, a fake life and all of that. Hence the title Skeletons Chorus. So she's trying to like shine the light on how humanity can be flawed and have a lot of defaults and stuff. She's not letting society, um, she's not letting the whole society and everything get to her or be like them. She's trying to shine light to who she really is and what she can be. The thespians also have a role to play as a corner of the gallery is converted into a space for this act. The first scene begins with the birthing of a new life, which comes with more questions than jubilations. Clad in their brightly colored traditional apparels, the puzzled parents of the newborn seek answers. We have questions. Questions? Papa, you must have heard about our child. Ah, Mokugumba, I heard your wife today. Papa, we have questions. Questions? We have serious questions. Can the court reveal to us what we have betted, Papa? The whole arrangement has struck a chord with the audience who enjoy this rare experience. The interesting thing about art is like being able to see um, different people expressing themselves in different ways that are unique to them personally. I feel like art is a very personal thing and then it's amazing when you can um, relate to other people's personal experiences and I think that's why we're all here right now, you know, like looking and appreciating what other people took their time to, to do and to create. So it's something like that's very beautiful and then seeing the drama, it was amazing and then it's like, oh, giving birth to an abomination, you know, and um, it being related to the works is just phenomenal and I really enjoy, I'm enjoying myself here. Every work is telling a story in a story, right? And, you know, I, I, this exhibition is not just a simple one because it took a year, right? And every one of these artists had to immerse themselves in the concepts in each sense and it took them to, using their style to formulate stories that you get everywhere when you look at every painting. The missed predilections of Aboya is one ride that will linger in the hearts of this crowd as they soaked in different sides of the art. From there, we move to the Places Gallery still in Lagos to enjoy first time a homecoming solo show by contemporary artist Bernard Ategua.
It's Bernard Ortega's debut exhibition. His signature style, technique, and color is something anyone can't miss in his exhibits at the Pacers Gallery in Lagos. It's my first time that I'm doing a solo show uh, in Africa because I, uh, I had uh, like 14 or 15 solo exhibitions across Europe and US. So first time is my first time to, to be in Lagos or to visit Nigeria. It's the first African solo for um, Bernard Ajab. He's a Cameroonian artist um, who's also of Nigerian descent. It's his first time in Nigeria, although he's part Nigerian and um, it was only appropriate to call his first time. He's quite a big African contemporary artist. He's known, um, he's quite prominent internationally, so it's good for him to have this um, exhibition here on the continent. It's great that he's here in Nigeria. So, you know, first time is just the appropriate name. Discussion time, coming back from market. Early morning food are just a few of the images which captures everyday people using bold images and colors. I use vibrant colors a lot because uh, it's like a kind of pop art that I'm doing that I'm, I'm calling uh, Afro pop by, uh, by Aja. So in the beginning of my uh, career, I was, I was very influenced by, by pop art, by European artists or uh, American artists. So I decided to, to adopt those colors, those flashing colors, as my, um, as my main colors of painting. Bernard is known for his vibrant colors, his, you know, his vibrant acrylics, his sort of abstract, you know, portraits of everyday life in Africa. He um, definitely knows how to capture, you know, scenes that we just sort of see every day and maybe sort of take, a, um, take for granted, but he puts his own sort of agile spin on it, makes it very pop-like, very pop, African pop and um, very contemporary and very sort of relatable and warm. And um, yeah, he's, he's been doing it for quite a while and you know, it's just an honor to have him here in Lagos with us. The artist uses his images to celebrate issues people sometimes take for granted, calling attention to these hustlers and applauding their enterprise as an important part of the economy's growth and development. Like, like this one behind me, I, I, uh, I call it uh, morning food. So it's like, actually, you know, every time in the morning before going to work, you would like to, to, to like have something like to feed your stomach before, uh, uh, before going to work. So actually, food is like to, 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 if you eat food, it's like to have energy to walk. You have energy like to think. You see, so you have energy to, to be active at work. Because you know, when you're smart, you're not feel nothing works for you. Yeah, so that is why the, the bot is called uh, uh, Morning Food. I'm very impressed with Bernard's work. And I'm very impressed with what Pacers Gallery is doing. Um, the artist has traveled all the way from Cameroon to be here. And I think this sort of Pan-African movement through art and culture is something that we haven't really invested in in Africa, in Nigeria for a long time. So I think it's a really interesting way to begin to create the cross-cultural conversation that is very important in bridging the bridges between um, this new Pan-African movement. And the works are really strong. Um, it's a contemporary reflection on what we all know, what is very familiar to every one of us. You know, So it's daily life, street life, but done in a very contemporary fashion. For this contemporary artist, the subjects as seen in the marketplace are part any city's DNA, a mix of all sorts of energy that adds vibrancy to life with skilled brush strokes and mastery of color. And he decided to salute this in his latest body of works. So much color there in Ben's work. And when we return, we check out the works of art by another artist riding solo as well. Now let's see the images that made it to our works of art segment this week and check out 
the art quilt. And these are the works of art you sent in this week. The interesting thing about our works of art for this week is that it's either done by women or celebrating them. Let's begin with this one by Elizabeth Oluwatui. It's called I Am That Boy. It's done with acrylic on canvas. Then Aki Mustafa has Ground Not Business is an oil on canvas piece. Then Echoes of Gladness is a work by Zubal Ismail, done with acrylic and newsprint on canvas. Then African Elegance is an acrylic on canvas piece done by Ademola Sunday. My Story is also done with acrylic on canvas by Desmond Akindoju. Then Josh Feger has this work called The Maiden. Trapped is a charcoal drawing by Ui Ididiong. Then Ease Yourself is a mixed media on canvas work done by Adebayo Taiwo. And that concludes the works of art you sent in this week. Thank you so much for celebrating women on this week's episode and we hope we see something different the next time. Primitivism, identity often sought for by members of Western society, exerts a limitation and barrier against the progress of creativity. Lovely images there. Mark Making is a solo show by Chijuki Onura at the Center for Contemporary Art in Lagos. Mark Making is a solo exhibition by Chijioke Onora, a drawing and sculpting lecturer at the University of Nigeria in Suka in Enugu State, who brings his works of art to the Center for Contemporary Art in Lagos to make a statement on different media. The title of this exhibition is Mark Making, Chijioke Onora, Mark Making. It's all about uh, making, a statement, making statements with lines be it on paper as drawing, or on wood, or on cloth, or on any other surface. But the idea is using lines to make statements. Through the diverse works created, the multi-talented artist shows that he can walk the talk. So when students and young creatives see what he has done, it can inspire them to tour the path. And there's a unifying factor lines. When I look at his works, how I still learn you know, from the way he moves, you know, his strokes. So he's a great teacher. We used to call him um, Oski. Um, he was a master of everything and he was, a, he was a jack of everything and was a master of everything. He could draw perfectly. He did batik. The first time I, I got into Soka, he did, he did um, um, a batik exhibition titled Ulukububa, 
and you know they painted on fabrics and I was amazed. I was wondering, wait, you can paint on fabrics? It was a new experience for me. He, he sculpted perfectly with wood and other materials and he painted well. And so he's, he's the, the teacher's teacher. You could go to him and ask any question and you're sure to get a great answer and a satisfactory one at that too. So um, today I'm excited because um, he's showing, he's, he's exhibiting, um, this is beautiful um, talent that is inborn and is now being expanded and I'm, I'm excited to be, to be here and be a part of it. One, he's an accomplished artist, but two, he's also um, a very important educator. Um, he has influenced many of the artistic practices of many artists that we've known who have gone through the Nsuka school. Um, and we believe that this is the time to celebrate our educators and celebrate our artists who, whose influence is much far-reaching um, than just their own artistic practice. The artist infuses cultural elements into his images to talk about contemporary issues, especially tapping from his background as an Igbo man. I could make paintings, I could make drawings, I could make textiles. But there is something that ties all these things together. That is the lines, the use of lines. Therefore, I decided to make my statements emphasizing on lines, and I brought in those aspects of uh, art, borrowing from my tradition, the tradition of Igbo people of Anambra State, you know, the tradition of Ichi. That was where I started, and the uh, marks made on doors. Uh, carved doors of the uh, pre-colonial Igbo people of my area. So I try to use those things as a metaphor for speaking about contemporary issues. Even the title of the images reflect this love for tradition and the artist explains some of them. What sparked of that uh, for me to begin to for me to begin to to, to make this, uh, this art was one, the photographs that I saw, ancient photographs that I saw of scores of individuals, you know, these photographs were take, taken at the early times of the European incursion into my place. So a lot of people had the achievement. Someone took the photograph in 1910 and kept it away in England in one of the museums. Then later on, 100 years later, he brought them back and uh, wanted to find out why uh, what could be happening in the areas where these photographs were taken. And to see all these photographs of people of my, of my area with these itchy marks sparked off the interest in, you know, uh, trying to relate with them again. The um, exhibition focuses on um, Onua's um, investigation of itchy uh, art from the Igbo tribe. Um, and what he has done is an investigation across paper, across um, fabric, and in sculpture as well. Um, the title of the exhibition is Mark Making, recognizing that the marks that he's made are, are across the different types of medium. He's able to make marks on paper, um, through the fabrics and the dyeing, and also through sculpture um, that are representative of the Ichi um, scarification that we see um, in, the, in, in the East. This artist has used his images to discuss issues and proffer solutions, utilizing marks to make his mark. And for what to anticipate the next time you tune in, take a look. Coming up on the next edition of the program, We show the works of art that made the cut at the Art X Lagos Fiesta. In Encounters of Place Situ is a group exhibition at Co Gallery in Lagos. It's a night of music, exhibition and reward for excellence in the visual arts sector.
we encourage you to keep liking, sharing and viewing our page so more people can enjoy the ever bubbly and ingenious art scene in the country. Your art house experience doesn't have to end when the show is not on television. Interact with us on our various social media platforms. See any edition of Art House on our website or YouTube page. Join our very interactive Facebook page by joining the group on Art House on Channels. We're everywhere. That's the program today. We appreciate you for being a part of it and look forward to interacting with you on our various social media platforms. I'm Melinda Akinlami, encouraging you to stay safe and keep being creative.